Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, want to talk to, uh, some questions for Dr. Michaels and Rear Admiral Cook. Uh, first, you know, a little little history. Um, Valdez crud was a nickname that was given yeah. to the sickness experienced by cleanup workers, which Exxon attributed to a cold or flu. Um, I have to say that I, I found it incredibly troubling that during the Exxon Valdez spill, Exxon argued that their cleanup workers simply had a nasty flu that was spreading throughout their camp, accounting for symptoms that just happened to be more closely aligned with high chemical and crude oil exposure. Now, unfortunately, that so-called flu for many Exxon Valdez cleanup workers lasted over 20 years. That's a, that's a long flu. And I think it's time that we realize that cleanup crews are being exposed to unhealthy chemicals and toxins that can have debilitating long-term health effects. Now, here we are today, 20 years later, but most troubling of all, we're watching history repeat itself and we seem to be learning too little from the past disasters. Just weeks ago, we saw BP talk, taking a strategy page right out of Exxon's book by saying that the same common symptoms were the result of food poisoning. BP's Tony Hayward said, I'm sure they were genuinely ill, but whether it had anything to do with disparates in oil, whether it was food poisoning or some other reason, etc." Uh, Exxon said of its disaster that the illnesses were a flu-like upper respiratory illness that spread because of crowded living conditions. I'd like to ask uh, why you think a company in Exxon or BP's position would want to link common symptoms of crude oil and chemical exposure to a virus or food poisoning, no matter how obvious the linkage to toxic exposure the symptoms could be. You know, I, I can't speak to BP's um, motivation, but we see over and over again situations where workers, even where workers are injured, um, clearly the workers blamed. I mean, at BP Texas City, the initial response of BP was to fire the workers involved, and only after there was an investigation that was done, it was shown they weren't, you know, they did make mistakes, but they weren't at fault at all because of the way the system worked, and they were actually rehired again with apologies made. The issue, though, of, of figuring out what's, what illnesses are associated with the exposure is a very tough one. You know, we have uh, long-term OSHA rules on what's recordable, but what's going on in the Gulf now is any time a worker reports a condition that they believe to be work-related, either reports it to us, reports it to NIOSH, to BP, or through one of the, the health surveillance systems that Dr. Howard worked on, that goes into the system and the medical detectives from NIOSH actually investigate it. Because we've learned from, from Exxon Valdez, we need to, to run down every one of these cases. Now, a follow-up question there. It's my understanding that, there, that there's a clause that specifically states that under OSHA, cold and flu will not be considered work-related. So is there any concern that throwing into question these symptoms linkage to toxic exposure could limit uh, your ability to investigate? I don't think so. I mean, that's officially it's not recordable because the way we what's useful, and we, you know, we keep recordable conditions consistent. But in this situation, we are running down every report of an illness. And this may lead to changes in the way we record injuries, but certainly, um, I think in this case, we are not considering these any less valid than any other reports. Just to add briefly, Congressman, you know, I, I'm sitting here wearing the blue uniform trying to represent all aspects of the Coast Guard, but we receive our medical support from the Public Health Service. So we have an, an admiral on staff who is part of the Public Health Service, who's our chief medical officer. And he's just spent the better part of the last week in the Gulf in the same, same meetings as, as our, our two doctors here. And uh, because we're, we're so interested, too. So I, th I think there has been some learning that's gone on over the years as far as getting in there and trying to assess the impact of workers quickly. Well, I want to uh, encourage you all to look at the lessons uh, that we've learned in the last 20 years uh, from the Exxon Valdez incidents. We really can't let history repeat itself, and we need your agencies to be very vigilant in that cause. And I yield back. Mr. Rohn,